the locals want more tourism or are they, are they fed up? No, they're not fed up here because tourism is not a big thing in Montpellier. Uh, no, it's not a big thing compared to uh, Provence or... Um, there are visitors more and more, but as you've seen, um, the shops are not... They're nice shops, but they're not only for the tourists. And uh, uh, tur well, the thing is that how people could be... The thing is that they are... The main industry here is agriculture and tourism, even if it's not that big yet. It could be even bigger, and we need to build more infrastructures, hotels, and um, so what else could, and, and the research labs and small companies, but uh, tourism is, uh, I mean, even if people complain, but usually they don't work in tourism, or they, they work in another field, but you know, in France these days, tourism is one of the main industries. It's very important to our country. I, I can't remember what's the percentage of our uh, net product it represents, but interior net product, PB. But it's very important, and especially in the, in the south of France, where there are not many factories left, and employment rate is high. Uh, it's essential to Provence, to the French Riviera. Here too, it plays a big part. And it will be, uh, well, we hope it will be increasing in the future. People are, are fed up with tourism, world, fed up, especially in Barcelona. There are a lot yes. of protests. Yes. Because, yeah, it's become just crazy. I mean, all tour operators just go to Barcelona, so it's really hell for the inhabitants, because they have to queue everywhere, prices went up, but a great deal in a very short period of time, though uh, no, it hasn't happened here, no, 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 no it's not, uh, maybe Nice, um, and I don't even know if, well, Depends how places mm -hmm. are, get organized, of course, but I can't really think of places complaining about too many tourism, tur tourists, sorry, about tourism, being too many tourists. It's uh, a lot of people actually work during the, the high season and then close down the shops, the restaurants, the bars in winter. And uh, some make enough money to, to get by and having to work in the in the winter month so uh, no, no, the, the worst is uh, is Barcelona some places in in Switzerland where they complain because it's it's difficult to for the inhabitants to find uh, affordable uh, places to rent and, um, yeah I've heard of many places but outside of France in Switzerland Spain with Barcelona and in Italy, Venice, of course. Yeah, yeah. Venice has lost nearly, I mean, more than seventy percent of its uh, inhabitants. And, uh, yeah, it is a pity because for the preservation of the buildings, so uh, it's. Uh, shouldn't be, uh, well, we should go beyond that certain level, a certain number of visitors, because then it really disrupts the, the life in, in such places. So uh, I went there, I went to Barcelona once, and I've seen it, queuing everywhere. Even I went in November, yeah, so this time of the year, at the Sagrada Familia, there was a long line. Oh yeah, we couldn't even get there. I couldn't even get there. Well, after two hours, I just gave up. Uh, to visit a park. First time I bought tickets to visit Parc Guel. To visit a park and I couldn't enter the park. I had to come back two, two or three hours later oh to visit goodness. a park with beautiful sculptures. But well, that was just very weird. And uh, yeah, and I booked an Airbnb, which was, yeah, I really did things. So I wouldn't do it like that again. 
good sound. Yeah, it's just too much there. I totally understand that the people living there. And I won't go back to Barcelona. There are so many other nice places outside of Barcelona. Actually, much smaller, nice places. But yeah, I understand on a cruise you don't have a choice but <laughs> go to such place. But they're beautiful. I mean, I really love Barcelona. Very nice place, uh, restaurants and places to go out. And, uh, did you take what you call the cable? No, not the cable. No, no the, the suspended uh, yeah, the the funicular kind yeah, of. Yeah, we did not. Yeah, uh, I did. Uh, the queue was not too long, actually. It's the only thing I uh, did queue for a very we long time. We did that in the Alps, the gondola. Mm -hmm. That was scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Alps is uh, it's another dimension. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, so where is your next stop? Italy? Uh, no, we're going to uh, Marseille. Marseille, okay, nice. No, Monte Carlo and then Marseille. Monte Carlo and Marseille, okay. Marseille is a very uh, touristic place, but still has a spirit. Well, there are still a lot of a mix of populations. It's it's, uh, it's very interesting. Marseille is uh, it's very touristic parts, but also parts where tourists to go to it's it's very big there's a lot to see and I really like Marseille it's one of my favorite places do you miss Lyon? do I miss Lyon? Uh, yes and no Lyon has, has grown much bigger over the last 10 years and now when I go to Lyon I find people all stressed out compared to Montpellier okay. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, what I miss are the good restaurants, because <laughs> there are a lot of, you know, it's famous for its uh, good restaurants, it's the capital of gastronomy, and it's, it's true that there are a lot of good products and very good places to go out to. Yeah, no, I, I prefer sun, sunshine, so here, it's, it's just <laughs> perfect. Yeah, it's, uh, I love this Mediterranean weather, even if it's sometimes a bit windy and it can be very rainy, the rainy season is now, uh, we can have a lot of rain all of a sudden, uh, but it usually doesn't last very long. to be a long walk this afternoon and it's uh, it really has a spirit it's really uh, really pretty very different from of course what you will see in Marseille or Monte Carlo but it was in, in April and uh, the sea was very rough for 
28 hours, so less than 36 hours, we had to sail, and it was a rocking boat. Oh, yeah. Everyone was sick yeah. on board. We oh. were among the youngest. Uh, <laughs> we were, and I couldn't imagine what just people with walking difficulties or just being uh, not used to. Well, and it was really rough, and at one point the tables um, turned upside oh, down in the, in the in the in the dining room, and even the staff was surprised. <laughs> so, yeah, it was. Uh, you know, it rocked after a couple of days. We finished. We had finished the, the cruise. It was really, really something I had not expected on the Mediterranean Sea. But apparently, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, can happen. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not ready for another cruise because I was, yeah, couldn't find any place, any, any to hide <laughs> on the, the ship. River cruises. I don't know if you've ever joined. Uh, sometimes work for Viking um, on the Rhone River, and uh, the cruise is very nice along the River Rhone because you get to see uh, Camargue, uh, Provence, all the way up to Lyon and Burgundy. So it's a very popular cruise. Then there's a wine cruise along the River Garonne in Bordeaux, and several uh, a year. Uh, and then, of course, the Rhine River and uh, the Seine River in Paris and Normandy. small river cruises along the Canal du Midi, starting from Saint to Toulouse. And then you can see the well, countryside of France, very uh, remote parts. Uh, it's very interesting too, uh, it's just uh, not as famous as uh, Provence. Uh, other side, but the, really the southwest of France, if you like good food and authentic stuff, um, good wine, it's unbelievable. It's full of surprises and uh, beautiful, beautiful patrimony, architecture, well, just so incredible villages, 